Today, I want to talk to you about the trauma bond. Have you ever found yourself stuck in an abusive relationship, unable to leave despite knowing that it's not healthy for you? Or maybe you know somebody who's been in this situation. And if that's true, then this video is for you because I'm going to explain to you what the trauma bond is so that you can understand the complex dynamics of abusive relationships and how the trauma bond forms. So first, let me cover what a trauma bond is. A trauma bond is a psychological connection that forms between an abuser and their victim. It's a bond that's based on shared traumatic experiences such as emotional or physical abuse that creates an intense and confusing attachment between the two. One reason why trauma bonds are so powerful is that they're built on intermittent reinforcement, meaning that the abuser may one day be loving, kind, and supportive, and then switch to being cruel, demeaning, and hurtful in the next moment. This inconsistency creates an addictive cycle of hope and despair where the victim keeps hoping that things will get better and that the abuser will change even though all the evidence suggests otherwise. Another reason why the trauma bond is so difficult to break is that it's reinforced by a sense of shame and isolation. So the victim may feel that no one will understand what they're going through or that they're somehow responsible for the abuse. And this can lead to a self-reinforcing cycle where the victim feels more and more trapped and powerless. Another reason why trauma bonds are hard to break is because they're often accompanied by a sense of fear and danger. So the victim may feel fear because if they leave, the abuser would retaliate or become even more violent. This fear is magnified if the victim has children or if they're financially dependent upon the abuser. Now that you understand the basics of what a trauma bond is, I want to dive into how this phenomenon is studied and how uh, we have come to understand how a trauma bond forms and also how to break it. So this is becoming an increasingly uh, studied field amongst mental health professionals in recent years. And I want you to understand the historical roots of how the trauma bond has been conceptualized and studied over time. The concept of the trauma bond has its roots in the early work of John Bowlby, a British psychoanalyst who is best known for his pioneering research on attachment theory. Bowlby believed that children formed an attachment to their primary caregiver in order to ensure their survival and that this attachment served as a template for all future relationships. He also identified different attachment styles, including secure, insecure, avoidant, insecure, anxious, and these attachment styles would reflect the quality of the child's relationship with their caregiver, as well as all the other relationships that they would have in their life. Well, in the 1970s, the concept of Stockholm Syndrome was introduced, which refers to a psychological response in which hostages developed positive feelings towards their captors. This term was coined after an incident in which hostages in a bank robbery in Stockholm, Sweden, appeared to have formed a bond with their captors. In this very real robbery, there were four people taken hostage and they were held for six days inside of this bank in a standoff with police during this robbery. And during this, these six days, a bunch of very odd events were happening. So while we had the robbers holding everybody hostage, they would show small gestures of kindness to the hostages. For example, one of them gave their coat to a hostage when she was cold, and another time they gave another... Uh, hostage a little souvenir of a bullet casing so that they could have something from this experience that they were going through. At one point, they threatened to shoot one of the hostages, but they told the hostages, we're only going to shoot you in the leg. We don't want to kill you. We just want to, you know, get the police to pay some more attention to our demands and so on and so forth. And the hostages felt that was so kind of them to not threaten to kill them to only shoot them in the leg. Many events like this were happening. So you have a very stressful event of which the hostages are being held against their will for six days by people with guns, not letting them go, right? They're being held against their will. And yet because of this circumstance, this very high, high tension, high stress uh, situation, the small gestures, one of them let 
uh, uh, one of the hostages call their family, for example, and, and they didn't answer. And they said, well, you should try again. Try calling them again. And the fact that the, the hostage taker said to the hostage, try again, the hostage started growing feelings for these people, just so you understand how real a trauma bond is. At the trial of the hostage takers, the robbers who held these people, one of them, one of the four people who were hostages, not only uh, testified on behalf of the hostage takers, she also set up a legal defense fund and made sure that their attorney's fees were covered. One of them would end up marrying one of the hostage takers. So the, the trauma bond is very real. It will have you rerouting your entire life trajectory. What you thought was not normal, absolutely unacceptable in one moment, it will have you thinking this is normal, this is what I must do, and this is the, the course that my life is meant to take in the next moment. So while Stockholm Syndrome is not exactly the same as a trauma bond. It has a lot of similarities in terms of the emotional attachment that develops between a victim and the abuser and the lengths to which a victim will go to defend their abuser. So in recent years, mental health professionals have begun to recognize that the trauma bond is a distinct phenomenon that can occur in abusive relationships. The trauma bond is characterized by a powerful emotional attachment that is based on shared traumatic experiences such as emotional or physical abuse, which I stated already. But it's also important to know that there is a real physical component to a trauma bond. In other words, we know you are trauma bonded based off of how much and when you are releasing cer certain neurotransmitters and chemicals into your body. So this is not just a, an emotional attachment to a person. This is just as addictive as heroin. And actually, it's even more addictive because your body is tailor-making for you the concoction of chemicals that your body needs in order to have the high feeling that comes with that love, that euphoria around the trauma bond. Remember, I said the trauma bond is made up of equal parts hope and equal parts despair. And so the thing that you are calling hope is this sense of euphoria. It's this sense of high. And that feeling is made possible because of the chemicals, the neurotransmitters that your body is dumping into your bloodstream, tailor-made for you. So understanding the trauma bond is critical for providing effective interventions for those who experience abusive relationships. And if you're not familiar, my narcissistic detox intensive guarantees you to break this trauma bond. It's important to recognize that while you are not responsible for abuse, if you are a victim of abuse, you are not responsible for that, for the abuse itself, but you are responsible for the outcome. Leaving an abusive relationship is a complex and difficult process. And if you understand the dynamics of the relationship, if you as a victim understand the dynamics of the relationship, it's easier for you to develop a safety plan and to work through the underlying trauma that is fueling the bond. I also want to point out that the intermittent use of the trauma bond is key to understanding how to break it. Every time you think, I'm going to leave this person, and you leave them for a little bit, but then you go back to the abuser, you actually strengthen that bond. In other words, that time apart from the narcissist, from the abuser, did not lessen the trauma bond, it enhanced it, it strengthened it, so that the next time that you go back, you've made it more difficult for you to leave again. It's less likely every time that you go back to an abuser that you'll actually leave the relationship once and for all for good. Obviously, it's also important that prevention is key to reducing the incidence of abusive relationships. And this requires a comprehensive approach that includes education, community outreach and awareness, policy changes that address the root causes of abuse, such as social norms that tolerate violence. And by addressing these factors, we can create a society that is less tolerant of abuse and more supportive of healthy relationships so that healthy relationships become the norm. If you're watching this video and the things that I've been describing are actually describing your situation, I want you to text me at 512-677-9322 and see if you qualify to join my narcissistic detox intensive in which I guarantee you to break the trauma bond. That confusion, the feeling like you're being torn in two directions is a cause of the trauma bond. You deserve to be safe, happy, and loved. And while it might take 
time and it will definitely take effort to break free from a trauma bond with the right support and resources it's absolutely possible to heal and move forward and not just move forward but to truly have the fulfilling life that you are after so please if this is you do not delay reach out and see if you qualified to join my intensive and if you are in court with a narcissist and you have children then i want you to check out this video next to understand how creating a case around best interest will help you win in family court